So then I had a verified Tesla Twitter account that literally looked exactly like Tesla. It had the blue check, everything got all over the news, international. I mean, like it was crazy, but people only really started getting mad at me when I did the, the Elon Musk can go fuck himself song. Then it was like, all right, what's this guy doing? What's up? What's up? What's up? I'm brand man, Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with another episode of no labels necessary podcast. You can catch us every Tuesday, every Thursday on Spotify, Apple music, wherever you listen to your podcast here at the intersection of creativity and currency. The no labels way, man. Looking for people who are doing stuff different. And today we got a special guest for sure. Um, a guy we actually had the convo, so we put and we got to edit them together because we had a great convo and we were like, no, what this needs to be a whole podcast. So, <laughs> so today you are going to learn and get the inside scoop on a professional troll, how to get attention on the internet. If you want to figure out how to hack this attention troll and end up on the news within seven hours, this is the guy because that's what he did. <laughs> Check out this talk we had with Connor Masur. All right, guys, we actually got, have a quick segment for you guys introducing one of the most interesting guys that I've seen on the internet recently. He's making waves with some great marketing tactics, some interesting troll tactics, and knowing how to get attention, period. Y'all want to take some game. I'm sure he's going to tell y'all something that, that's going to stick with you because I'm here like looking to learn, man. <laughs> um, this, this is Connor Masara. He's an artist. Do you consider yourself anything beyond like just an, a musical artist? Artist, producer, uh, internet, crazy person. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, well hey, y'all have seen some of these people do these AI covers and, and things like that, right? But he's had one of those covers that's popped in. We actually talked about it on a, on a podcast where he did a Drake cover. Right. Of his own song, which is an interesting marketing tactic, right? The AI we know is trending. <laughs> we go back to just your videos in general, how they're positioned. Like we we're looking at the one this morning where you I'll go to this one. Actually, I'll, I will say the other one, the Tesla situation. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a whole other thing. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Can you explain the viral Tesla account that got banned. Right. Um, yeah. Artist. Well, well, I guess or before I get into the Tesla thing, I'll I'll just say in a more like general terms, like my my mindset when it comes to marketing is just accepting and understanding that most people don't care. They're not going to care who you are. They don't know. They don't know who I am already. It doesn't it's just understanding that you have to win them over with something that's at least interesting enough to keep them from scrolling away. So I'm going in there knowing that I'm on enemy turf. I'm on like I'm I'm playing an away game. Like every single time I post, I know that people are just betting against against me because they probably don't know who I am. So they're like, who's this guy? Why should I care? So uh, I think it's just that that mindset of like instead of uh, I think for a long time I had the mindset of, uh, I mean, like like many people, you're kind of posting for the people you know. You're in your circle, and it's almost like it's like if you had an inside joke with your friends. Mm. Like if you post an inside joke, only your friends are gonna get that. Mm. You have to be able to to be interesting to other people anyway that's just my my general mindset is just, i just do stuff i try things and i don't know it's it's all kind of like uh i'm just trying to have fun so that leads me down to, to doing crazy stuff like the tesla thing which was from when elon made the like you could pay eight dollars for a blue check i went and uh I, just, I paid eight dollars on one of my burner accounts and changed it to look exactly like the Tesla Twitter account. So then I had a verified Tesla Twitter account that literally looked exactly like Tesla. It had the blue check, everything. And then I just started posting insanity for like seven hours. And it was like the craziest day of my life. It was like got all over the news, international. I mean, like it was crazy, like. CNN hitting me like it was crazy like uh 
John Oliver read one of the tweets on air. Like I got interviewed by Newsweek. Like it was insane. Wait, all of those posts was only a seven hour span? Yes. That's crazy. I thought it was a couple of days. Yeah. No, it was literally seven hours. Did you write these posts out before you created the account or was this just you like in your bag, just sitting there tweeting in real time? So this is how it went down. So the so the night before it happened, I was DJing and I remember I was I, I was telling my girlfriend like, yo, like Elon made the, the eight dollar blue checks thing. Like I've been seeing a couple people like before that somebody did uh, the Nintendo one where they had Mario giving everybody the finger, which was really funny. And I think there was like one other one. And then most people were like they were doing fake Elon accounts, yeah. which was funny. But I was trying to think of one that nobody had done yet. Uh, and I just yeah, I was like I was with my girlfriend. I was like, I got to I don't know what I'm going to do, but I think I'm going to do a fake account tomorrow. And then the next morning I was like, oh, no one's done a Tesla account. And then I was like, all right, let me just set it up. I did it. I. uh I, I got like probably 30 like draft tweets ready to go. Just like because I knew my time was going to be limited. I knew they were going <laughs> to ban me for sure. So uh, <laughs> so I, I had like 30 of them in the chamber. And then uh, and then I also texted a couple of my friends that are comedians that I, I do. Like I did a comedy podcast a couple years ago with them. Um, I, I work closely with them, uh, my my boy Victor Trevino and and Dimitri Bellardinelli. Um, and then uh, Dimitri was actually so the most viral tweet of all of them was the the one about the World Trade Center, <laughs> which was kind of crazy. But uh, that was actually Dimitri, my friend Dimitri's idea. So he like ghost wrote that tweet for me actually. But that was the biggest one. Um, but there was like it was it was probably. So I had like 30 of them. Uh, Dimitri gave me the World Trade Center joke one. And then I just went for it. And at first I was like. I really didn't know. I mean, I thought maybe like my friends would see it and maybe think it's funny. Like I didn't know what it was going to become. And then uh, and then like 20 minutes later, I so I had the idea to go and and start liking tweets from that account so i would go to people that that follow elon or or are talking about tesla or elon and i would start liking their tweets from that account so people would start seeing the account uh and it wasn't really getting any traction but then there's this journalist named named ken klippenstein ken klippenstein uh who he makes fun of elon a lot and uh and i liked one of his tweets and then he Next thing I knew, he retweeted it. He has like half a million followers. And then it was just bananas for the rest of the day. It was just insane. <laughs> it was on the front page of Reddit. Like it was it was the craziest thing. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. So even if I hear some of the, the strategy, obviously you get an account based off of something notable, somebody notable. You got to have yeah. a lot of tweets in the chamber ahead of time. Right. right. We start going empty in the clip. Yeah. This liking strategy seemed like it worked. You just, you got to figure out who's the right person to like. It. <laughs> so eventually they see the profile and then yeah. they can blow it up. Yeah. I mean, but honestly, like the, I was just doing this because I thought it would be funny. I didn't think it was like a marketing strategy for me per se. Cause I also wasn't sure like if I would, <laughs> I thought like, I might get sued. Like, I don't know what's going on. Like, I don't know, but I just thought it was funny. So, uh, so I, I just did it. I didn't think it would like help my music career or anything, but it, once it started going viral and, and so, or I guess fast forward, like Elon was tweeting, like at the same time that I was tweeting, like, and he changed the parody rules basically. So, uh, that was when they, he changed it. So, uh, you had to have parody like in the display name. So it would have to say Tesla parody or else it's banned. But the only thing is he also banned people from changing their display name in the first place. So I was just, I was just stuck. I was like, all right, we're just going to ride till the brakes fall off. And I just kept on going. 
it was crazy. Anyway, I got banned. And then I was like, all right, like, what do I what do I do now? Should I tell people it's me? I don't know if I should like. And then a couple hours later, I was like, fuck it. I'm going to just do a TikTok video about it. And I did I did a couple videos in a row that night explaining it. And two, both of, the, of those videos did insane numbers immediately, like two million to like back to back two three billion it was crazy in in a day it was insane um and then yeah it just kept on going all the like then i started getting the the news outlets reaching out it was it was crazy (laughs) but uh so that's that's kind of like that's the story of it and then a couple weeks later i put out a song called elon musk can go fuck himself which is just i'm just talking shit i don't know it's i just thought it was funny but uh that was really when what was funny is like pretty much everybody was mostly on my side when i was doing the tesla thing like they're like all right that's funny even people who love elon whatever um everybody kind of thought it was funny but then but people only really started getting mad at me when i did the the elon musk can go fuck himself song then it was like, all right, what's this guy doing? But let me take a quick second to tell you about Forever Fan because many of you know that my agency is responsible for helping multiple artists blow up tens of billions of views and billions of streams. But I want to specifically talk about a strategy that we've used to help artists get millions of streams on their very first song. And as a matter of fact, in the last 12 months, an artist got signed to a major label using this specific strategy and you'll never guess what it is pre-saves yeah that's right pre-saves they're extremely powerful when you do them correctly but most people don't understand how to do it see the problem becomes we put all this effort for this pre-save campaign and then the song finally comes out and then what happens after that nothing you're starting from ground zero again because you're not about to ask people to pre-save every single time you drop a song So I'm here to put you on to our solution for that, which is Forever Fan, a platform that removes this massive pain for artists by making it so when a fan pre-saves one of your songs, they automatically pre-save every single song that you drop after that. So your work doesn't just create a one-time fan of a single song, it creates a Forever Fan. And you can take advantage of this same solution. Go to foreverfanmusic.com so that you can get more streams and a deeper relationship with your fans for the same amount of effort. Foreverfanmusic.com. Check it out now. One question I was going to ask you, just like, well, why would you do something like this in general? And you kind of just say, hey, I just thought it was funny, which is <laughs> which is great. It was yeah. just like passion project, I guess you could call it in its own way. But then when you relate it to what actually did happen, the video was going up on TikTok. Yeah. And yeah, before you even get to the song, what impact did that have on your profile in terms of the type of people that it drew? Did it have any relation to your music in terms of conversion? Or at least maybe you, you seem like a guy who has a, you know, a pretty like just fun loving affect right you just like you like to laugh so it's like even if they don't like your music they're still fans of you because they see your personality and how you might do anything do you see anybody that you feel like is going to stick around for the long run potentially yeah absolutely and i mean in there of course there were people who were turned on to my music because of it i think it's a weird we're in a weird space with tiktok that i'm still trying to understand too is when I go viral for things that aren't directly related to my music, it is a little bit weird the way because you'll get followers. Like I had I had another video a few months, like a month or so before the Tesla thing where it was just me reviewing like some really expensive cookies. I just randomly did that. I didn't think that was going to do numbers. I just like cookies. I, <laughs> I've got a sweet tooth. And, uh, and that did, that still does number that's is like over 6 million right now. Um, but that no one that none of the followers I got or engagement off of that are going to care about my, they just don't care about my music. So that's also like, it's great on one hand, of course, it's great that it went viral, but also those people aren't there for my music they've then all those people were like oh we need another cookie review and i'm like i'm not gonna be the cookie guy like that's not me so 
<laughs> I don't know, but but back to the Tesla thing, like I think it did. I think it's still tied in a little bit for sure because it's still like it's still enough of my personality attached attached to it. Um, it definitely drove some people to my music at least, um, and also the fact that like a lot of the the articles of like Newsweek interviewing me or whatever, like they were talking about me, the fact that I'm a musician. Um, so that was helpful, but it's also like, I'm going into this, all of these, knowing that it's, it's only going to be a really small percentage of people that actually care enough to learn more about me, let alone go listen to my music. But if you keep doing these things and just like having fun with it and letting people come to you, it's, it's a lot less, uh, I don't know. There's for me, at least it's a lot less like mental pressure on it. If I can just create and do whatever and have fun, whatever I feel like doing and know that some of it's going to come back to me, back to my music, then whatever. It's all it's all gravy, you know. Yeah, I like that just from the standpoint of a lot of creators do speak under pressure mm-hmm. and don't like the pressure of having to fit into a specific type of box or create content in general. But I feel like a lot of the stuff that people don't like when it comes to content is them feeling like I have to do a content that creates a specific formula and speaks in a certain way, right? But if you're just doing stuff that you like and put it out there and it comes back to you, I mean, that sounds like an empowering and again, also like peaceful situation to be in. Yeah. The music is not like playful in that way that I've heard thus far, right? You're not like Will Al Yankovich or anything like that. Weird Al. <laughs> like you're, yeah. you're, you're comedic and all this other stuff you do. Like, that's just you having fun, but your music is like just legit, just serious and good. I don't want to call it serious, like a, a like a conscious, but you know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Music, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, of course. Like some, some, sometimes like there's, there's jokes or goofy things incorporated into my music, but I'm definitely not a comedic artist. I'm trying to make actual music that people are trying to listen to and connect with. Um, right. But just me as a person, I am definitely like a goofball. Like I like doing goofy shit, but um, that, yeah, that's, that helps tying it in uh, just as, I mean, like we were saying is it's, the more people can connect to you as a person, the more long term their their relationship with you will be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the the shit you put out, man. They people who follow you like you, and they would want to be around you and hang out with you because of the personality and the humor in it, man. I mean, you're Thank funny. You. Yeah. You got that video with the manager shit, like how you. Oh you. yeah. <laughs> like we, gotta, yeah. we gotta play that because we can play those videos or whatever yeah like, yeah uh, that's hilarious man and I, yeah i don't know man i think you you definitely have fans the, the fans of your music i don't know what that number is but you definitely have yeah. fans. Corey, do you can you think of a comparison for him because again he's not weird al but he's what? also <laughs> not little nas x maybe little nas x well, I to... honestly I think that oh, is a really I I I honestly think his model is a little bit I'm a, I'm kind of similar to that where yeah it's like his music is not a joke but he the way that he conducts himself on the internet is usually he's trolling in some way and I I definitely have I've talked about him as as like a as a reference for sure yeah I I love the way that he's able to just grab people's attention in a way that's like it just feels natural to him. It's just Mm -hmm. he's just he likes being a troll and I like being a troll, too. So (laughs) I was thinking it might be my like nose cat, maybe probably be good. They're probably like one and two. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Yeah. And and you mentioned, too, man, you mentioned your. um your friends are in the comedy space. Like, do you have a comedy background? Is that the world you, you kind of came from or went in before music? I wouldn't necessarily say I have a, a background in it, but I just love, I love comedy and I have, I just have some friends who are in it and who do stand up and, 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 and stuff. But 
I just I just love it. I did do a comedy podcast with them years ago. We did a it was called 24 hour panic attack. And we and we podcasted for 24 hours straight and just like lost our minds. It was ridiculous. Um, but uh, no, I, I don't I don't I wouldn't necessarily consider myself a comedian per se, but I like doing funny stuff. Okay. I did try stand up one time, though, because because my friend Victor, who's a comedian, he basically called my bluff. It was like uh, I was like, oh, yeah, maybe I would do stand up someday. He was like, all right, bet I'm signing you up right now. Like he signed me up for an open mic and I had to go that night and just go. It was crazy. Uh, yeah. But, but yeah. Yeah. And I actually did it. I did it. I, I went 10 minutes, which is super long for especially for your first time um but it was i mean it was like it was literally they had a uh the the stand-up comedian like i don't know how anybody does that mentally but um yeah they had this like open mic thing in like the back of a giant like moving truck they had like a (laughs) they had like a stage inside it with chairs inside the truck it was bizarre it was so weird uh but yeah it was literally like i i I did it in front of like four or five of my friends and then like three comedians it was like not a big crowd at all but it was still nerve-wracking though it's like i'm used to being on stage for music but that's a whole other level of stress. Just like that silence. You're just standing there with the mic. Like this better be funny. Like, <laughs> I, know. I know, I know you talked about too, man. You, you weren't really um, thinking about how you were going to tie your music into the big Tesla moment, but kind of seeing what, what happened with that. Like, are you planning to kind of do, or are you planning to incorporate these I guess mass scale trolls into your music promotion. Like, do you feel like you saw a line in the ways you could have tied that back to your music that you can move forward with? Yeah, I think just like we were saying, as long as people can identify with the with the personality aspect of it, as long as people, if they find me through the Tesla thing and they're they like me, I think that obviously there's a way that I can convert them into a listener. Um, I think now I'm starting to, I'm starting to think about just easy, simple things. Like maybe I'll do some merch that's related to the Tesla thing. Maybe I'll do, uh, I'm, I'm going to do some, uh, or when's this coming out? We don't know. So <laughs> okay. Can- but it'll probably, well, actually, it, it'll it'll be out by then but i'm I'm gonna do like uh some like bootleg like drake ai merch which is gonna be hilarious and will probably get taken down but it'll just be funny um just like tying doing more of that and tying it back to my music um yeah i don't i don't know it's hard for me to I feel like a lot of a lot of times, like before I started really, I guess, figuring out how to navigate social media for me, I always saw music marketing as something you have to have or the way that other people were doing is like this really long, like linear, like planned out thing that you have for you got like your whole like six months planned out. And. I think that's great if you can do that. But for me personally, I have to kind of do it like piece by piece. And like I'll have I mean, if I have like an EP or something like I definitely have stuff planned out for that. I've got all the dates lined up and the all right, I'm going to do promo videos around that. But. Because of the fact that I never know what is going to go viral, I feel like I have to just take it like piece by piece and just do kind of whatever I want and then uh, and not think about it too much so that whenever I have these random things that do numbers, then I'm like, oh, okay, let me work with that and build the rest of it out. Uh, Like the Drake AI thing, even like I didn't know that anybody was going to care about that. It's like, (laughs) I I don't I don't know. Like, I just do these things and, and see what see what happens, you know? Yeah. 
yes, yeah, so that, that makes me question: Is there is trolling an art or a science? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a little bit of both because you have to. It's like when I'm when I'm doing stuff in that realm. It's a science in that I know or I'm I'm taking pieces of things that I that I know people will react to. So it's like a science of piecing together those it's like a chemical reaction of like okay this will get this reaction you put these together people will respond in this way. So you're trying to put together a reaction almost. But it's an art just in the way that you express it in your personality or whatever it is that you're you're doing you know mm. so if you had to teach your somebody, creativity or sorry go ahead. teach somebody how to troll how would you <laughs> do that? well i think it's all i think this ties into just being an artist in general or be or being somebody that makes things you need to have a genuine perspective and what i mean by that is literally your whole world view your whole like don't just troll just to troll for attention that's how you get you know the the people who do i always think of people who kind of they'll do like prank content stuff like that stuff that's like kind of mean spirited stuff like that just for attention and there's no real like uh I don't know. It doesn't feel like it's coming from anywhere except getting attention. If there's like something that is behind it where like the Tesla thing is like, I legitimately don't like Elon. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, it's not like, like, of course, it's just a, a dumb, funny thing. But behind it is like, there's real like uh there's a perspective behind it you get what i mean um and I, I think i think a lot of artists and i think myself uh, i well i struggle with this as i make music now even but i think for a really long time like uh it was hard for me to like, i feel like your music has to have that too it's like why why should people care it's like we all have the same tools we all have really nice microphones and can get good quality beats even if you don't produce or and producers have really good quality equipment now everybody has the same tools now and we all have tiktok we have the ability everybody has the ability to market themselves now it just becomes what's your perspective what's your what's your taste what do you like what do you don't like how do you express what you like versus what you don't like? That's the only thing that's going to separate us at this point. I, I think that's ultimately a good thing. Um, but but I think now it's less about like, uh, I'm, I'm not quite as worried about like the exact techniques or doing things right or uh, I don't know. I, I'm just trying to follow my like, uh <clears throat> or i guess follow the feeling you know follow the 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 way it makes me feel what do i like what do i not like anyway that i, I could ramble about this forever but that's my thoughts <laughs> dope man i i think you said a mouthful there in terms of just the value of perspective because we talk about that a lot like you said as it relates to artists and when you look at comedy right these tweets that you put out if people laugh at the same thing now it's like oh he thinks this is funny so now we can relate we bond over being able to laugh at the same thing so that's immediately a perspective right yes when they tell a joke and i like that joke means i kind of like them right i like their perspective he's funny so now i want to see more from it and like just reading the tweets that's the crazy thing about it you don't even have to hear the yeah. Stick around it or hear the person talking. It's just like, yo, who's thinking these things? I yeah. like them, right? Um, and just hearing because they're hearing the tweets, man. Uh, yeah, we'll probably like play the clip or something around it. Like the shit was funny. And one of the favorite ones was the the World Trade Center. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. 
It definitely because it just <laughs> yeah it's the absurdity of it, right? It's yeah, absurd. yeah. And and to add on to that, if you if you think of like comedy is like a shared experience that's uh you know you both think one thing is funny you laugh together mm -hmm. music is a shared experience of like you you can both share this 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 feeling or this emotion at the same time because this music is giving it to you so there is a similarity there where it's all just about the human connection of the of all of this is like giving people something to attach themselves to and 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 relate to so some artists and managers are just waiting for lucky moments when the ones who are killing it have systems to consistently take artists to another level over and over again and if you want to see what that looks like we just did a collab where we not only show the system that we use that's resulted in billboard hits some of the biggest viral moments on tiktok instagram and youtube but also we got jr mckee to break down how he took an artist from zero to one of the biggest hit songs of 2022 and getting a grammy in january of 2023 this is recent stuff not old tactics if you want to check it out go to www dot brandmannetwork.com slash grammy don't forget the www or it won't work because jr gets into the details of looking at the data decisions that got made how much content got created and how they adjusted the content over time for different parts of the campaign this is real behind the curtains type of stuff so again go to www.brandmannetwork.com slash grammy if you want to check this out and apply it to yourself back to the video have you ever thought about that mindfully when you create music? Or how do I create a shared experience or what am I really trying to emote? Y yes. The creation process for me is, is kind of a difficult balance between those things where because I'm trying not to overthink it, but then I'm also trying to be aware of those things too. So it's a little bit difficult sometimes to balance that, you know, and I think every anybody that creates art is going to is going to struggle with that a little bit. But, yeah, I'm definitely aware of it. I guess I would say I start by. Just like any of any of these marketing things, I start by just doing throwing an idea out. Whatever it is doesn't matter what it is. It can be stupid. It can be funny. It can be sad, whatever it is, wh whatever the first thing that comes. And then maybe I'll take some of this, this understanding or experience of like, okay, so how are people going to respond to this? Then I can start honing it. Um, and, that, or, and actually tying back to, I said, like ideas, my whole series of giving out. So the way that I went viral for the first time on TikTok was this series that I do called Steal This Idea where I give out samples for people to flip. So I'll it's like, here's an idea, do something with it. And then I'm playing a synthesizer for 15 seconds and then people sample that or I'm playing whatever instrument. That was actually what grew my audience in the first place. Uh, and that I think the fact that that was like a shared experience and it was just here's an idea to do something with it take it and do whatever you want that i think was uh i mean that's why it grew so fast is because it wasn't like i'm not trying to sell you something just do whatever you want with it and uh i think in music marketing and i'm I'm sure you guys have talked a lot about this is like you don't want to come out the gate trying to sell people something. You don't want to come out the gate like trying to convince people to go to your Spotify immediately. Like they got to like you for they got to even care that you exist first. You have to make them care first. Um, I mean, even think about like big artists. It's like. You got to hear an artist like even somebody that's featured on like a drake song or something just because you're featured on on one drake song if that's the first time i've heard of you 
like maybe I like what you did. That's that's great, but I might not go to your go listen to your discography. I'll just be like, oh, that was a fire Drake song with that person on it. But then I hear them again somewhere else, and I'm like, oh, that was the dude that was on the Drake song. Let me go check him out. You know, it takes a minute to for people to warm up to you. No, that's a fact. That's a fact. So I guess right, let's do let's leave. Yeah, it my bad. I I go on all these tangents, but no, man, no, it's perfect. Cause I can tell that you really stay in that creative process and, and many people, all of us struggle, right. In terms of the creation and then the commercialization of the creation. And they require two different mental spaces yeah. to do fluidly. Right. So yeah. I, I, it sounds like you found not necessarily a balance, but you definitely found a way to stay in that creative bag and then use the algorithm. Like fortunately the content um, algorithms at the moment allow you to scale the you know, the visibility of it without you having to do much other like marketing activities at the moment. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I mean, I think it's still, it's still important to have like the core, like, okay, if you're planning around a release or something, you got to do the normal basic things of telling people that you have music out, but everything around it is just, pure whatever whatever you want to do i i think that's the best way to approach it and when we were you were talking earlier about people being worried about being stuck in a box with their content stuff like that i think i'm a perfect example of s- sticking to exactly the same thing is not always the best move i'm a person who i mean i so my social media journey i would say really grew from the, so I did a song a day for an entire year. I literally, I posted like, uh, uh, I mean, it was usually like a shorter song, but with a video every single day for an entire year. And, uh, and it was me producing it, writing it, recording a video, editing it every single day for an entire year. I was building that up. Once I finished that and that, you know, I grew a, a bit for sure from that. Um, and definitely personally grew, but, but my social media grew from that, but not crazy. But at the end of that, I, I was seeing that as like my box because that, because the people that discovered me from that were like, oh, that's the guy that does the song a day. So then I was like, if people know me from that, then what do I do? I don't know. I'm stuck. So I was, I was really worried. But then a few weeks later, after I finished that, that was when I started randomly the steal this idea series. I didn't know that anybody was going to care about that. I just randomly did a video and then all of a sudden that blew up. And then now that's the thing where, Oh, people discover me from that. That's the steal this idea guy. So then Mm -hmm. I'm like, Oh, do I have to stick with this? Oh no. Like, am I stuck with this? But then, but the reality is you can always redirect. And especially like we've been saying this whole time, especially if people can attach to you and your personality, you can hop around to different things and maybe they'll wish that you'll every once in a while go do your format from before, but they're still going to like you regardless. It's not, they discover you for you, you know? So I, I try to, I still struggle with this all the time is, is like, Oh, should I be doing like the stuff that, has been proven to work for me or should I keep trying stuff to, to go even harder? But like the Drake AI thing too, like I, that was a random thing. I just randomly did that. My manager was like (laughs) the night before I did that, he was like, yo, or actually it was all in one night, a few hours. It was like, he texted me. He was like, yo, uh, I just got this, like, uh, one of the, one of the AI, like site it wasn't even one of the sites it was like this google drive thing it was weird it's like not even <laughs> i don't know where he found it um he was like do you want me to put one of your songs through it i was like yeah whatever i don't know so i gave him the acapella he sent it back to me we were laughing about it i was like oh what if i put what if i do one of those videos where it's like the somebody playing a video game under it and then th- just as a joke like I I've been seeing people do that, but I didn't think (laughs) 
I never really think that people are going to care because I'm just doing something I think is funny. But then, yeah, the numbers. But it actually, sorry, this is a whole other tangent, but it's really weird to see what goes super hard on Instagram versus TikTok and vice versa. Like my the Drake AI thing is at like almost 400K on uh, on Instagram, but it's only at like 20K or something on TikTok. It's like, what do, I don't know. And then some things I have that are like millions on TikTok and then it's like, 10,000 on Instagram. Like, I don't know what it is, but. Yeah. Nah, the, the it's all a mind fuck. <laughs> they're weird across platforms. For sure. Yeah. You would think it all works, but it doesn't. And I think partially is the algorithmic differences, but part of it is even just the culture and space that people are in when they're in all those different platforms it has to have something to do with it. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's cool to hear you break down that process of, getting into one box and breaking out of another. And when you really put them together on top of each other, rather it's steps, right? Yeah. And steps of getting to know you mm -hmm. and a career. People are going to know many individual things about you or associate, associate you, you with many individual things. So you can't be afraid of getting associated with anything or else you'll never be associated with nothing, which means we just don't know you. We just don't care. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, hey, man, it's been really dope talking to you. Uh, do you have like a big plan or scheme that you want to reveal right now? Or, you know, you <laughs> perhaps until you take over the world. Man. For now, I'll just say. Everybody just follow me at Connor Masara. Learn how to spell that and pronounce that. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to drop an EP this summer. That's like the big plan, but um but yeah, otherwise I'm going to just keep following the the feeling and 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 doing goofy shit and seeing what happens. <laughs> hey man, it'll be really interesting to see you like hone in a lot of these tactics and approaches that you do for your humor just to your music and see where that comes out and to like a full-scale marketing campaign, but either way it goes. Yeah, as she said, y'all follow and as always this is yet another episode of no labels necessary podcast i'm brandman sean and i'm Corey. we out